With the recent GPT-4 announcement, it's become quite clear that OpenAI is in fact far from open. So, if you're like me and you'd rather have lots of fun running these things yourself, fully unchained, at home, on your own computer, then don't worry, I've got you covered. Through the magical power of open sorcery itself, you've got thousands of models here on Hugging Face to choose from. All the big names are in there, such as GPT-J6B, OPT, GPT-NEO, we've got GPT-2 up the top there with the most downloaded, and with over 8,000 models to choose from, we're already spoilt for choice. I'm sure there will be a lot more added in the future as well. There's a nice filter here, so say you want a different language, you could go for Spanish. Yep, there's lots of Spanish in there. Maybe you want Japanese, that's fine. There's Japanese models in there too. Maybe you want a multi-language one, that's, that's not a problem either. There, we've got a big science initiative here. Big science, large, open science, open access, multilingual language model. And there it has a nice Bloom Rails license as well. But what about the nerds? It seemed the most frequently asked question I got on my last video where I show you how you can run all these fancy chat models and have them different personalities and all sorts of things like that. Well, the biggest question I got asked was, can it code? And the answer is, well, I'm going to let you decide for yourself, as I think you'll have a very good idea by the end of the video. If you go over to the Hugging Face model list again here and type in code, you can see there are lots and lots of different coding models to choose from. As there are so many models to choose from, I'm just going to be testing three of them. With so many, let's just go with our old friend GPT-J6B as a general model. Sure, it's a little bit old now, but it is still a fairly decent generalized model. It's one of the most downloaded on Hugging Face and it fits very nicely into my VRAM without having to use 8-bit mode. Searching for code over on that Hugging Face text generation model link there gives over 200 models and we see right up at the top there is code gen with one of the most downloaded. I'm going to grab the 6B version of that model so here we can have a quick look at the model card. This was released in June 2022 so it's not all that old. There are multiple versions of it. Code Gen 16B Mono is a very big one that's over 32 gig. I'm using Code Gen 6B Mono here so it's a little bit smaller but once again it does fit very nicely into my VRAM uh, using BF16 mode. And for my final test model there's another one here as it looks to be fairly recent looks like the release date was around December 2022 it's also quite small it's only around 5 gig have a look at the files and versions there 4.6 for the PyTorch model there. One thing to note about this model, if you are going to test it for yourself, is that custom models don't currently work out of the box with the text generation web interface. I needed to edit the models.py file and download an extra file. There is my edit. I just had to set trust remote code equals true. But of course, if you're a programming nerd, then this basic edit shouldn't be too daunting for you. These models have already been tested against various coding tasks. For example, if we take a look at the code gen paper, we can see the results when they used the human eval tests. It's a pretty impressive score at the bottom there, and it also shows us some of the other scores up the top that didn't do so well. This means we should expect to see this model do somewhat better than GPT-J6B. There it is with some fairly low scores compared to the one I'm going to be using, the Code Gen Mono 6.1B. I'm going to be making up my own tests, but one thing to check first is the sort of prompting required for each model. The model cards provide some useful information, such as the training data used and what its expected use cases are. It's also worth noting any limitations where they are provided, and also the license variation. Code Gen, for example, if I scroll up to the top here, has a BSD3 clause. Looking at these model cards to get an idea of the sort of prompts that I should be using, Code Gen says, as an autoregressive language model, Code Gen is capable of extracting features from given natural language and programming language texts, and can calculating the likelihood of them. However, the model is intended for and best at programming synthesis. That is, generating executable code given English prompts where the prompts should be in the form of a comment string. The model can complete partially generated code as well. The model card for Santa Coda says the model was trained on GitHub code. As such, it is not an instructional model and commands like 
write a function that computes the square root do not work very well. You should phrase commands like they occur in source code, such as comments. Or write a function signature and doc string and let the model complete the function body. As you can see, they are both a little bit different, but they both perform the same task of generating code. Looks like CodeGen may have a better understanding of natural language, but both models should work well with something like completing a function that has a doc string. GPTJ, of course, has a general representation of the English language, and as we saw in the benchmark earlier, it may not fare too well against both of these specialist models. Now I have a bit of an idea on prompting, let's make some tests. Okay, test number one is going to be the no code scenario. This should hopefully show the model's ability to produce something based on an English language only request. I'm guessing GPT-J6B may do okay here, but maybe the coding ones, as it's only a couple of comments, not so much. For test two, I'm going to be a good nerd and follow the instructions. I want to detect a face, I just don't know how to write the function or call it. This should be the sort of prompt that the coding models are expecting. Not quite sure what GPT-J6B will make of it in this case, but the other two should do very well. And for the third test, I'm going to try some graphics. Again, no functions here because I like being mean to AI code models. I'd like a pie chart that shows what I'm composed of. We've got five divisions there, which seems like quite a lot, and it may get a little bit confused about what I'm asking for here. I'm also not sure which model would do best in this case, as it's sort of a mix between English language and the start of a Python script. Okay, so for test one, I've got my GPTJ general model set up there. I've got my heading in there in the text box. I am, of course, running in notebook mode rather than chat mode because this is much better for code. Okay, let's generate and see what this thing can do. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, let, let's see if this runs. Can I just run it straight away? Let's copy this. We'll pop it into a new text editor there. So let's just run that code, see what happens. And as you can see, while it's close, it has got that basic print statement wrong. I've now changed the model to code gen 6B mono. So let's see how well this does on exactly the same test. And there we go. We've got the result there. It's also putting a code ends here. Let's just copy all this in again to our little program. And then if we run this version, Okay, I want to input a number, so let's say 50, and I want another number, so let's say 30, and it's given me the result 10. It worked, it worked, excellent. So it has written some working Python code that does exactly what I want it to, just from some comment statements and no code whatsoever, brilliant. Okay, code gen passes. And the same thing again here, but this time with Santa Coda. Let's generate that code. And once again, I'll copy and paste it and run the command. Running the Santa Coda version, let's see how well this does. This is prompting us with some text. So it's looking good, isn't it? Looking good. First number 50, second number 30. The, the what? The GCD of 10 and 0 is 50. Okay, that's not what I asked for. I wanted you to print the GCD. The GCD is 10. It sort of got the right answer, but that isn't really what I wanted. So I, it, it's a pass. I think it's okay. It, it's very easy to fix. But um, I think CodeGen did the best on this test. And so on to test number two. Once again, starting with GPTJ6B, can it complete this code to create a face detector? And there's the code it has generated. It looks interesting. It's possibly quite close, but oh, at the bottom there, it hasn't quite finished. So you can just click generate again if you haven't set the number of tokens as high as it needs and it will continue the code. And this time if I scroll down, it's, no, it, it's, it's completely lost it, hasn't it? It has completely lost it. It's still doing the same task, but it hasn't properly finished up the code. Let's, let's see if we can get this to actually make something. And this time, no, no, almost, almost. It's got this extra bit at the bottom. Okay, that almost looks like it could be some completed code. Let's try this. All right, so there it is. I've got it in my text editor there. Let's run this and it, oh, oh dear. No, we've got an assertion failure. Source is empty. 
but that's not too bad. That's not at an actual failure because it just means I haven't got this one.jpg in there. It hasn't asked me for an image. It's just decided it's going to be called one.jpg. So let's be fair and actually create that file. Okay, now I've got an image file. Let's run that again. Oh, oh dear. No, no, that, that does not look right at all. Okay, I think GPTJ is close. It is very, very close there, but there are some errors which you will have to fix yourself. And doing that exact same test, but this time I'm here on the code gen 6B mono model. Okay, we've got a lot more code there. It's looking interesting. And uh, it once again is repeating at the bottom there and doesn't quite seem to be doing what we want. You can, of course, edit it slightly. So if I take that comment out, we'll get rid of all of this, get rid of all of that. If I just put this in here, and we'll put that comment. Let's see if it can carry on from there. Yes, that's starting to look a little bit better, but once again, it's sort of gone into a strange loop here. Detect face and crop. I didn't ask it to do any of that, and it's just ending up there. So no, not, not a complete Python program. Unfortunately, you would have to do a little bit of coding yourself to get that to work, even though it is very, very close. It's about 90% of the way there. If we switch to the Santa Coda model and try that again, it gives us some fairly similar looking code. Oh, and it looks like that may actually be a complete set of code. Let's copy and paste this and give it a go. And if we give that code a little run there, uh, oh, okay. So it's got an image problem there. It can't find image.jpg and it hasn't got this XML. That's fine, that's not necessarily an issue with the code. Let's just make this image and we'll also show it where that default XML file is as well. Okay, so just a minor change there to the location of that XML file. I now also have an image JPEG. Let's run that command once more, see what happens. Is it gonna, oh, look at that, it's working. It's detected the face in the image. Excellent. Well done, Santa Coda. You win that trial. On to that third test, once again back with GPTJ6B. Here I want a pie chart that describes me, and I want it done with matplotlib. Come on, GPTJ, can you do it? Okay, there's the code. It looks interesting. Okay, it's defining a pie chart. Oh, all right. That's it started to go a little bit weird there and start to repeat things. I wonder if I can prompt it a little bit. Let's Let's carry on from there. We'll give it one more chance. No, no. It's very, very close. It's done quite well, but that just won't run at all. All right, code gen. We know you can do better than GPTJ. Let's have a look. See, see, show us how it's done, code gen. Okay, there we go. We've got some code. It says code end. All right, let's take this and give it a quick run. There it is. We've got the code gen pi ready to go there. Let's run it. See what happens. Oh, oh look at that. Look at that. I've got a pie chart which perfectly describes me in some excellent working code. Well done, code gen. You passed that test. All right, Santa Coda, can you make it two out of three? Let's generate and see. There it is. It's given us some interesting data there. All right, let's 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 give that a go. Okay, there's Santa Coda's version. Santa Pi, let's run this, see what happens. Are we going to get a pie chart? No, sorry. Label must be of length X. So, Code Gen, the clear winner there. As you can see, the answer is both yes and no. The various models certainly can give you the right answer, but you may also need multiple attempts going back and editing it. You can't generate massive reams of code all in one go as it tends to lose track of what it's doing. However, if you do already have some programming experience and a fairly decent idea about exactly what it is that you're trying to do, then these could be very helpful. And just to mention that GPT-4 sized elephant and in the room once again, the open licenses apply to these models, let you use them in all sorts of ways. It's also worth noting that Santa Coda can do fill in the middle, which is something I've not seen in any other models. This, however, does require special tokens, and there isn't an easy way to use these in that text generation interface as yet. I did find something that GPT-J6B was quite good at, and that was generating HTML code. Here, for example, I can crank up the max tokens, uh, say there, to about 467, and if I ask it to generate a table of nerds, 
then that looks to be almost exactly what it's done. It hasn't quite finished off the table there, but if I go over to HTML, you can see there it has got the top five most popular nerds in the world. And of course, if you do that again, so I'll just cut all those nerds out, then I get another table of nerds. Once again, it hasn't quite finished, but if we have a look at the HTML, okay, so it can't count either, but there we have what it considers to be nerds. So an interesting way to have a look at some of the biases in those models. It's still quite a lot of fun. But what about the future? Because this is just the beginning. Well, the big advantage here, remember, is that all these models are open. You can download them. And if you can download the model, you can fine tune it, unlike GPT-4. And here in this pull request, we can see that a LoRa tab or something similar to that may soon be coming. So you can do your own fine tuning too. Something else that may happen in the future is stable diffusion support. Yes, running multiple models at once may eat all your VRAM, but imagine how much fun that would be to integrate this with the stable diffusion API as well. So if you think all of that is amazing and you can't wait to try it for yourself, then just head over to this installation video for more information.